Hi, Weekly Roundup number 45, saving you time with all the good stuff from crowdsourcing websites, Adafruit, SparkFun, DF for Robot, Seed Studio, my favourite Tindy, and also other places that I've managed to find around the place. A bit of a mishmash on Kickstarter this week. The Max Pro Logic claims to be an ultra low cost FPGA board coming in at around 37 US dollars or 32 US dollars for the early birds. It's built on the Altera Max 10 FPGA and it's pretty cheap. At the moment you can pick up an Altera Max 10 FPGA board on AliExpress for around 75 US dollars. However, this Kickstarter has an SD slot, bunch of LEDs, buck converter, and breaks out 65 of the GPIOs. The campaign creator is by Earth People, who have run several other successful campaigns in the past, like the UniPro Logic 2. This next one is interesting. It's a bunch of PCBs with an Atmega 32U4 and MPU9250 IMU. It acts as an extra input when playing games, so you can turn your head and it'll change the field of view. I'm not a gamer, so I don't know if this would be a good idea or not, but it looks interesting. The Goliath CNC is a new take on an old idea. This CNC removes the tethering of X and Y axis, and instead has three wheels that moves it around the workpiece. So you can CNC any size you want, theoretically. I do have my doubts about it. The angular momentum of the motor during spin-up of the router might cause it to lose position and accuracy would be a nightmare once you get to very large workpieces as the error rate would be cumulative. You define the work area by moving a rectangular thingy to the corners and I figure that the cable between that and the router would act as a frame of reference. So it might just work. Pi serialized is a simple idea that provides what looks like a CP2104 USB to UART bridge and a handy board to be used with a Pi. So you can get to the console easily. The campaign creator has several Kickstarters under his belt, so he's been in this rodeo before. Stego board isn't an SBC, nor has it got any electronics in it. It is in fact a Meccano style building frame that has placement holes for a range of SBCs, hard disks, touch screens, NUCs, bricks, ITX motherboards, and even Visa mounting holes. Finally, someone has made one. You can stack them any which way, vertically, chuck them on the back of a TV, or even in a funky triangle. They also have hard disk and power supply mounts. Yes, I know, I did say last year that I wasn't ever going to mention robotic assistance again, but this one is really cool. It doesn't have legs, arms, or an evil face. Instead, it's a drone thing slash vacuum cleaner that follows you around the house waiting for you to say something incredible. It has a 3D camera and can interface to Alexa, so you can inadvertently order lots of expensive stuff whilst having an argument with your next door neighbour. Apparently it's really quiet and the rotor blades don't affect the audio pickup and it will... Oh, this is really working well. Just forget it. Crowd supply is a bit quieter this week. In pre-launch there is the Hui, which is a simple board giving you a bunch of capacitive touch inputs in various positions. As well as the Cypress capacitive touch sensor, it also has an STM32 and BT53 Bluetooth module. The idea is that you can use it as a generic interface to anything. And back in weekly roundup number 21, there was the Gnubi, which was a small open source NAS running the MT7621A and three gigabit ethernet ports, allowing you to connect up to six 2.5 inch drives. Well now there's the Gnubi 2, with the only difference being that it can house 3.5 inch drives instead. Steam Stories is an interesting one. It's an educational tool teaching kids the basic concepts of electricity and circuits. You can create nine different circuits powered from a coin cell battery as you read through the story. That's pretty cool. Over at Indiegogo there is the Swidget which was in weekly roundup number 40 and has just started to ship on Kickstarter. Well now they are on Indiegogo raising extra funds. And a new website this week called Group Gets which has been around for a while and allows you to benefit from the power of bulk purchases. Back in weekly roundup something, I mentioned the Z-Turn board. Well, there's now a group gets for this board, which will effectively knock off the shipping costs of up to $40 US. This board runs the Xilinx XC7Z010 
which is a dual core Cortex A9 and Xilinx 7 FPGA combo. It's a pretty nice little board. If you want some really seriously high speed acquisition, then there's the Prudac, which is a beagle bone cape that can sample at up to 40 mega samples per second. There's a long backstory to this board involving Jason Holt and Google Research. This group get is for the Prudac board, Beagle Bone Black, 16 gig SD, 64 gig thumb drive, and a BNC to SMA cable. Nice. The DIY Thermocam is pretty expensive, but you are talking about thermal cameras here. This is a DIY unit that contains a bunch of stuff to create a pretty decent thermal camera. Note that this does not contain the FLIR module. You'll have to buy one of those for around the same price as this group get or find one in a dumpster. Wiffy, wiffy, wiffy. Amber Wireless is coming out with a new board called the Amber Pi that effectively bridges a sub 1 GHz wireless network to Ethernet. Running in the TICC1210 MCU, it'll be able to speak to a bunch of low power short range sensors that are often used in home automation. I also noticed that they sell a USB RF stick, which is similar to one that was selling at IC Station a while back. 96 Rocks does sound like a Gen Y teenager rock group, but no, it has nothing to do with any music. It's a to be released SBC that's in the 96 board format, but runs the 2 GHz Dual Cortex A72 RK3399 SOC. It also has 32 gigs eMMC, 4 gigs RAM, USB 3 along with USB C, Wi-Fi, 4K capable HDMI, and an M2 key. They're also selling an expansion board with 18 Grove ports. E-Ink devices haven't really caught on much, but here's a 2.9 inch E-Ink module made by Squix. Squix. Who on earth came up with that name? In that 2.9 inch format, you have a black and white 296 by 129 resolution display, along with an ESP8266, LiPo battery management, and three buttons. So pretty cheap if you want a low power interface somewhere. I've mentioned the high five several times in weekly roundups, for example number 15 and number 43. Well the SI5 company is soon to release an upgrade on this RISC-V core. It's a 64-bit quad-core SOC with an additional management core. Up on their website they have a comparison with a Cortex-A35. It has some nice features like physical memory protection, real-time high-speed determinism, and onboard interrupt controller. Holy Toledo Batman! Is that what I think it is? Did Adafruit just buy out the defunct Radio Shack? Or is it just trademarks? Is it just a frame stock certificate? Or is it some more fake news? Nothing like a bit of excitement. Wiffy, wiffy, wiffy. The mishmash theme continues over on Tindy. Ever heard of the SignalX flip displays? These are the type you find at sporting events and are a mechanical display. This board will interface to one of those units and also provide a particle photon header. It can control 4 to 12 inch displays running off a 12 volt DC supply and are daisy chainable. If you need a bunch of extra GPIOs for your Pi, then this board gives you an extra 18 servo controllers as well as power on off, LiPo battery management and pushes out all the remaining GPIOs. It also has a beefy 5 volt 8 amp regulator to support all that extra servo current. Here's something to have in your toolbox if you have an SBC with a really hard to get to SD slot. I'd figure that some high-speed SD cards may not work as that long cable may cause too much crosstalk. Do you have a beagle bone and sick of the lack of USB host interface? MicroWaveMont has a fix for you. And they also have a second revision of their ESP32 Pico double-decker board with a couple of changes based on customer feedback. If you're into 3D printing, then there's this board which combines a RAMPS with an Arduino Mega and is capable of running the open source Marlin 3D printing software. And not quite as fast as a Prudac, but this board has an ADC that can sample at up to 20 mega samples per second. There's a Linux driver already written for it, so it really is plug and play. This board was designed because the creator has been mucking around with an open source ultrasound imaging platform. Nice. Okay, so this one is basic. All it does is provide an end of transmission Roger beep when you release the talk button on a ham radio. Powered from 7 to 16 volt DC, so it won't annoy the hammies. Neo PLC is a store that has a bunch of these small modules that are designed to be stacked on top of each other. Starting with this BLE module, there's a battery charger, OLED, IMU, GPIO board, and a bunch of other ones. 
Here's another LoRa and 8 Mega 328 combo board. This one can be powered by LiPo, USB or header pins up to 6 volts. It also has an integrated LDO giving you even more range. Wiffy, wiffy, wiffy. Back in weekly roundup number 38, Adafruit had the AMG8833 based thermal camera breakout. Well now they have it for the Featherwing, but dang it, it's out of stock. Ah! A servo won't be able to let you know what position it's in, unless you get one of these, which combines a 360 degree continuous rotation servo and a feedback wire that's attached to an internal Hall effect sensor. This will give you a fairly accurate position of the horn. All you have to do now is figure out where the zero point is. SparkFun have a new LiPo charger capable of pushing out 1 amps at 5 volts from a LiPo. Runs a typical combination of MCP73831 and PAM2401 ICs. SparkFun say you can daisy chain them to have more than 5 volts, but don't get too excited, you won't be able to get 100 volts from 20 of them. DF Robot has this infrared thermometer module. Runs off a 3 or 5 volt DC supply and capable of measuring from minus 10 to 50 degrees Celsius at 0 0.06 degree accuracy. Pretty decent little unit. Over at DigiKey there's this Micro Pi which has two clipboard sockets. It also has an MCP3204 12 bit ADC on board. Wiffy, wiffy, wiffy. And over in China you can pick up 10 of these Wemos compatible dual motor drivers from Banggood driven over I2C, although I'm skeptical about the 15 volt 3.2 amp maximum specifications they have. There's also this USB to UART bridge for the Wemos, based on the CH340G IC. Similar to DF Robot's DF Player, but this one can also update the contents of the SD card, which the DF Player can't do. From the description it looks like you can update the SD card over SPI at the same time as playing MP3 files. Hmm might get one of these to try it out. And over at Elicrow they have an unpopulated PCB for their dual channel inductive loop vehicle detector. If you're really keen on finding out if a vehicle is in your driveway then you'll need to hack around with this sort of stuff. You could probably do this with any MCU but if you want a simple cheap PWM signal generator then this one even has a small LCD capable of generating a 3.3 to 30 volt signal from 1 Hz to 150 kilohertz. So not the world's fastest, but at $3.35 each, it's a toolbox filler. If you want to play around with RS-485, then this will make your life easier. Has a 3.3 or 5 volt logic in and RS-485 out the other side, and can run at up to 256 kiloboard. Flow control is automatic, so you probably won't be able to handle bus contention with multiple masters. However, it does have some reasonably decent protection on board to handle miswiring. If you're mucking around with mains power, don't do it, no, seriously, then this simple board will let you know if you have things wired up incorrectly. Great idea, but really it's an accident waiting to happen. I really don't like those exposed solder points and there's also no mounting holes in the PCB. Well, I guess that's it for this mishmash of stuff in this week's roundup. Don't forget you can check out all these links on my website. Thanks for watching, see you next week.